Thank you, Jesus. It is well. Some days we got to say, it is well, it is well, it is well. No matter what we're going through, it is well with my soul. Hallelujah. It is well with my soul. Glad to see everyone here today. Glory to God. God is good and he's keeping us and he continues to keep us. Inspire through faith. Faith makes us well. Faith makes us well. First Kings chapter 17 verses 10 to 16. Let us pray. And dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your grace, your mercies, your loving kindness, your compassion which fails not, but is new every morning. We thank you, O oh God, that in spite of what we may feel, in spite of what we're going through, it is well. It is well in our souls today that we get to celebrate an awesome God. We get to celebrate a mighty God. We get to celebrate a God that is due his glory. And so we ask you right now to open up our ears that we may hear, O oh God, in the spirit. Open up our hearts that we may receive this word that we are about to hear. God, I ask you right now to use your servant for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Inspire through faith. Faith makes us well. Faith, as mentioned on last week, can proceed from various angles can be perceived from various angles and impacts our lives in many ways. Faith is meant to stretch us beyond our comfort zones and our own abilities. For instance, if I need $20, faith is not necessary for $20 because I simply go ask someone, most people have at least $20, and you have to ask that person for $20. It, they can easily give it to you. So you don't really need faith for $20. But if I need a half a million dollars, faith is required because I don't have a half a million dollars. And most people that I know don't have a half a million dollars. So it may not be the millions that you need faith for. For maybe, it may be a job, opportunity, a court case, or even a business transaction, or your finances. Keep in mind, faith is meant to stretch us beyond our abilities, even our understanding at times. The end result is that faith makes us well. There are three times Jesus declared, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. He spoke those words on three occasions. The ten lepers, he said to them, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. He said to those, hallelujah, the woman with the issue of blood that we talked about on last week. He said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well, Matthew 9 and 22. And the blind man in Mark 10 and 52, he said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Every instance seemed to pertain to a physical wellness, but faith goes beyond our bodily needs. The Greek word also defines faith, also defines well as whole, as whole. God wants us to be whole, well in every area of our lives. There, were once, there was once a man named Elijah who predicted there would be a drought. The drought happened 
that he became affected by it in a major way. His supply of food dried up and he could not find any anywhere. He could have died. But God instructed him to go to a particular city where he met a woman who had been preparing her last meal. We pick up her faith story in 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 10 to 16. So he arose and went to Zahath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called her to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread. Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And he said, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing, she said, as she said, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent. That means run out. The jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said. And she and he and her household ate for many days. Verses 16. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil became empty. According to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. Our focus is the response the woman had to what the man of God told her to do. He told her to do not fear. Go. Do. He told her do not fear. To go and do. He addressed the challenge that having faith will present for some people, which leads us not to go in or do it. Let us be inspired by the instruction the prophet of God gave this desperate woman on the verge of death, which made her well through faith. Do not fear. When we feel that something is impossible for us to accomplish, a sense of fear sets in. This woman's situation led her to fear the worst. Some of us can relate to this woman's situation or what she was dealing with as it relates to fear concerning the matter of life and death. Fear is often triggered when we feel danger or something threatening. Everyone has 
fear to overcome. For some, it could be the uncertainty of the future, a terminal illness, or a pending foreclosure. The prophet was able to discern the fear this woman was facing from her initial response to his request. And she said, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat and die. Does that sound positive to you? She said, so we may eat and die. On the other hand, fear should keep us safe through healthy caution, motivating, motivating the mind to action and self-defense. Even though there is a healthy side to fear, faith shall override fear. The Apostle James taught the early believers that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. James chapter 1 verses 3. We have become stuck in a world that does not understand perseverance due to the microwave mentality. Everything must be right now, microwave. You don't want to put your food in the oven or in the pot to warm it up, so we stick it in the microwave so it can be done in two minutes. But we have to understand that the world does not always present us a two-minute solution to our situation. This widow's widow woman's faith was stirred through her faith being tested or challenged by the prophet. The negative side of fear was now flipped on its head. No matter how uncertain the future may seem, you must flip fear to faith. There must be a response to inspire you to go forward. There must be a response that will propel you to move forward, to go. Hallelujah. Go is an encouraging command, which is mentioned in the Bible an estimated 1,542 times. God has been shouting that word to his people for many years. For example, Go to Pharaoh with Moses. Go to Nivea with Jonah. Go to Jerusalem with the disciples. Go up, go down, go over and go around. God has been shouting for many years, go. God knows that there are times that we can get stuck in our comfort zone, not willing to move or not willing to make a move. Going pushes us to exercise our faith. As mentioned last week, the healing preacher of the past would ask do, to do, for you to do something to demonstrate your faith. Do something that you could not do before you came to that meeting. If a person could not walk, the preacher would say, go walk around the room. Go walk around the room. Get up and go walk around the room. Even Jesus had told the 10 lepers to go and show the priests that they were healed from leprosy. Let's go to Luke 17 verses 11 to 14. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy 
on us. They said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were made well. On a side note, we must recognize the fact that these men received their healing as they went. So they were, had to go somewhere in order for their wellness to overtake them. By going as Jesus commanded, they received their results in faith. By obeying the command like these leopards, the little woman engaged in her own future destiny. We must be willing to engage in our future destiny by getting up and going. As she went, according to 1 Kings in 17, as she went, some results started to take place. This was only the beginning of her faith movement, which put her one step closer to victory. It is good to engage in the process, but we, what we must do in that engaging makes a difference. What we do in the process makes a difference. So do. We know that faith involves action. Action means doing something. The widow did not only hear the word and made a move. She had to go do something to receive the results of her faith. Her faith was not in the messenger, but in the Lord of the messenger. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. Verses 15, and she went and did as Elijah said, and she and he and her household ate for many days. First Kings 17, 14 to 15. Our faith is not grounded in the messenger, but the Lord our God who has made heaven and earth. Faith also gives us courage to do what is scary to us. Imagine a few minutes before this woman was prepared to die, before this man of God came to her. This woman was prepared to die along with her son. She acted on the belief through what the Lord instructed despite of the threat of death. Will you be the one to let your faith lead you to be courageous? The final results of her faith made her well. The jar of flour was not spent Neither did the jug of oil became empty according to the word of God. Hallelujah. According to the word of the Lord that he spoke to Elijah. Take note. Her connection was the word of the Lord. God was not, not going to do what he told her he was going to do. Because our word says that God's word does not return to him empty, but accomplish what he has spoken. If God said, let there be light, they must be light. If he says, let there be something in your life, whatever it is, God's going to make that something come into your life. Just imagine that, that that woman heard the word. 
Because the Bible tells us that faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of God. Romans 10 and 17. If our faith is anchored securely in Christ, we are able to cope through adversity in a positive way. Let your faith be anchored in the word of God. In closing, faith inspires us to receive the wellness of God. Today, you should be inspired to not fear. Don't fear. Push past the doom and the gloom. You should be inspired to go. Go engage in what will make things well for you. You should be inspired to do. Do. Be a doer and not just a hearer. For doers get results for their faith. It is the intent of God that faith will make us well. It is in the intent of God that faith will make you well. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you, oh God, that you are inspiring us to live by faith and not by sight in this time of uncertainty. God, we thank you, oh God, that we are yet holding on because of our faith. Father God, they said that people are turning to reading their word and it's encouraging their hearts and their minds to stay focused and not to go towards the negative. And so, oh God, I thank you that you're inspiring us through your word to stay positive and not to fear, but to walk by faith. And not, oh God, to sit and do nothing, but to get up and go. And to not, oh God, just go, but to do as we go. And so, oh God, we thank you, oh God, that you're stirring in us faith as a mustard seed. That you're stirring in us a greater measure of faith right now in the name of Jesus. That you're stirring in us faith like this woman with the issue of blood. To do extraordinary things, oh God, to receive our results. That you're stirring in us, oh God, the ability, oh God, to hold on. Because whatever you say it shall come to pass in our lives because we serve a good God we serve a great God in Jesus name we pray amen let your kingdom come and your will be done hallelujah we don't want to believe that everyone has a relationship with God it is important to have that relationship we don't want to just be known as somebody that knows about Jesus. We don't want to be known as somebody that just comes to church. We want to know, be known as someone that has a relationship with him. He came that we may have that relationship. And we want you to have that relationship too. If you have not already confessed. We want you to have this opportunity today to confess because Jesus loved you. He gave his life for you on the cross. Spend hours hanging there so that you can have life and life more abundantly. Before you confess, you have to admit, admit in your heart that Jesus is the son of God, that he died for you and that he rose again and now is sitting in heaven with the father Preparing a place for you to come and be with him one day. He's preparing eternity for you. Then you have to admit that you're a sinner. That you've done something, things wrong in the sight of God. And then maybe done some things wrong to others in the sight of God. And then you must believe. Believe that Jesus came so you may be forgiven. 
And when you are forgiven, the Bible says that therefore there is no condemnation to those who believe in Christ Jesus. You don't have to walk around with guilt and shame. And yes, we will make mistakes, but he'll forgive us again because we have relationship. And so the last part of this is that you have to confess. Confess with your mouth because whatever you believe in your heart, you should be able to confess it. Whatever you truly believe, I will say, in your heart, you must be able to confess it. We all have been to the place of confession. And we confess by saying this prayer together. So let us say this prayer. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Take away my sins. Wash me in your blood. Write my name in the book of life. Give me the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now that you have said that prayer, welcome to the family. Angels in heaven are rejoicing. God and Jesus is in heaven rejoicing. And we are rejoicing too. Welcome to the best family in the world. You ain't gonna ever find another family better than the family of God. Hallelujah. So welcome. God bless you. And if you said that prayer, call us. Email us. So that we can, will know and we can be able or willing to help you to continue to walk in your relationship with the almighty God. The greatest man who ever lived. Jesus is the one that gives life and he keeps on giving life. He gave his life so that he can give life. God bless you and welcome to the family.